Have you ever pondered, drawn in by curiosity, why a bird can effortlessly perch on an electrified power line without experiencing a jarring shock? The answer resides within a profound fundamental concept nestled within the world of physics known as electric potential. Now you might ask, what is this electric potential? How does it dictate the coursing current of electricity, influencing the everyday phenomena we observe? Electric potential, also colloquially referred to electric potential energy, is a comprehensive measure of the intricate work performed by an omnipresent electric field in transporting a charge from one designated point to another distinct point. To simplify, consider the energy you expend while climbing up a hill. The higher you ascend, the more energy you consume, and, coincidentally, the more potential energy you accumulate within yourself. Try to visualize yourself embarking on an adventurous hike up a towering hill. The energy you utilize, the effort you put in to reach the pinnacle, is your potential energy. It's the energy you've conserved by moving counter to gravity. Now, imagine replacing that hill with an invisible yet powerful electric field and replacing yourself with an electric charge. The electric field, akin to the force of gravity, is a force that's attempting to tug the charge in a specific direction. The work executed in maneuvering the charge against this force, this resistance, is what we coin as electric potential. It's a concept that's fundamental to the understanding of how electricity works and it's important to distinguish it from other, similar, concepts. It's crucial to take note that electric potential is not identical to electric potential energy. While electric potential energy is essentially a form of energy, electric potential is a different entity. It is a measure the work done per unit charge. Consider it as an indicator of the amount of potential energy each unit of charge can possibly gain or lose within the bounds of an electric field. Translated to the units we are familiar with, electric potential is quantitatively measured in volts, a unit that is equivalent to one joule per coulomb in simpler terms. It's also defined as a scalar quantity, a numerical term in physics implying that it owns magnitude but is devoid of direction. This sharply contrasts with electric fields, which are classified as vector quantities and possess both magnitude and direction. In summary, while it might seem a complex concept, understanding electric potential is an essential part of understanding electricity itself. It tells us how and why electricity flows the way it does, and why, in some cases, it doesn't flow at all. It might seem like a small concept, but it's one that has a big impact on our understanding of the world. This is different from electric fields, which are vector quantities and have both magnitude and direction. Now let's get back to our original question. Why doesn't a bird get electrocuted when it sits on a power line? This is a question that has confounded many and has even become a popular conversation starter. By analyzing the underlying physics principles, we can get an understanding of this seemingly peculiar phenomenon. The answer lies in the concept of electric potential. Electric potential, in the simplest terms, is the amount of electric potential energy per unit of charge that would be possessed by a charged object if placed within an electric field at a point. It's the work done by an electric field in moving a charge from one point to another. But what does that really mean? For electricity to flow, there needs to be a difference in electric potential. The concept can be understood if we imagine a river. Water in a river flows from areas of high potential, the higher ground to areas of low potential, the lower ground. Similarly, electricity flows from areas of high potential to areas of low potential. Therefore, if there is no difference, there is no current flow. This brings us to our bird. The bird sits on a power line, which is at a high potential. Since the bird is touching only one wire, it is at the same potential as the wire it's sitting on. This means that there is no difference in electric potential between the bird and the wire. Consequently, there is no current flow through the bird, and hence it doesn't get a shock. We can further delve into this by distinguishing electric potential from electric potential energy. While they might sound synonymous, they are fundamentally different. Electric potential energy is the energy a charge has due to its position in an electric field. In contrast, 
Electric potential is a measure of how much work the electric field would perform on the charge should it move. Electric potential is measured in volts and is a scalar quantity, meaning it has magnitude but no direction. This concept might be a bit abstract, but understanding it is crucial to comprehend electrical phenomena as a whole. From the example of a bird sitting unharmed on a power line to understanding the complex workings of our electrical devices, it all comes down to understanding electric potential. It assists us in grasping why electricity behaves the way it does and is fundamental to our modern world's functioning. Understanding electric potential helps us grasp why electricity behaves the way it does, from the simple example of a bird on a wire to the complex workings of our electrical devices.